Hi everyone and welcome. This is week 11 and we're going to be talking about SQL scalability. So what is scaling? Scaling is the ability to have your software deal with large amounts of data gracefully. So when we talk about scaling, what we're really talking about is being able to handle, you know, 10 customers, 1,000 customers, 10,000 customers, a million customers, and be able to do that without too many hiccups. Now, the solution that we might use for 1,000 customers might not be the same thing as the solution we would use for a million customers or whatever our data is. But being able to scale up, and especially when we start get talking about much larger data sets, is something that's actually really big in industry. Because a lot of companies either plan on getting really big or end up having sort of exponential growth, um, at least for a while, and they need to be able to deal with that. Now, when we talk about scaling, we'll usually talk about vertical or horizontal scaling. SQL databases are traditionally scaled vertically, which means we're adding more power to the servers holding the database. So if we think about it, like we have a computer and that computer, it's a server, but that computer, if we end up changing out the RAM, so instead of, you know, four gigs, we put in eight gigs, or instead of eight gigs, we put in 16 gigs. That's vertical scaling. We're making the server more powerful. Instead, if we were talking about horizontal scaling, that would be where instead of saying, I need to add more RAM to this computer, I would say, I, this computer has four gigs of RAM and I need eight. I'm gonna add a second computer and now I have eight gigs total. That's horizontal scaling. Now the thing about vertical scaling, which is usually how we'll scale SQL, there are limits. You can only end up having so many things you can do to upgrade your computer. You can only add so much RAM, you can only add so much CPU power, so much GPU power, you end up running into a limit. So the first thing that we end up wanting to think about is what could we do to fix that? Well, the easiest thing to do to fix that is scale it horizontally instead, rather than trying to make the server more powerful. So horizontal scaling is one of the first things that we would do with a SQL database. Horizontal scaling can also be called sharding or shards. Um, when we're talking about taking our database and scaling it horizontally. Now, some important things to consider. When we are talking about scaling, you have to keep your database or software responsive. You have to keep it usable at scale. So you end up having to say like, okay, well, if this query takes, you know, one second for 1,000 users and five seconds for 10,000 users, that could end up turning into a problem if we're starting to talk about a million users. So you have to make sure that the database is still usable at scale. And you also want to make sure that it's being as efficient as possible. Um, you want to sort of hit the sweet spot of enough uh, sort of care for the efficiency that it's going to be enough that it will work, but not so much that you spend all of your time doing that and you don't do any of the things that you need to be doing. But the small delays, the small little things that you might be able to shrug off at, you know, 1,000 or 10,000 users is a lot harder to shrug off at a million or 10 million users or whatever it happens to be. Reliability. Databases that go down or slow down frequently, they, they don't make the people happy. So you have to make sure that your database is available and doesn't have weird slowdowns because that's going to end up being problematic for how you're going to be doing it. Uh, as a vocab note, shards and servers tend to be used interchangeably, so you'll sort of see that in some of the resources and stuff. Um, okay, so some other scaling challenges. So vertical scaling challenges are that we can only add so much power to the server. The larger the server is, the more expensive it will be. So if we can avoid that, it will make it a little bit easier. Data consistency guarantees is another scalability issue. Being able to guarantee that our data is not being changed badly, corrupted, things like that is much harder 
when we get to talking about more data and bigger databases. Data replication, making sure the data is the same. Data integrity, making sure the data is correct. Data consistency, making sure that like everything is actually what it's supposed to be. All of those fun things. It gets a lot harder once we're starting to talk about more data and once we start talking about sharding the data or the database because the more shards we have, the more we have to keep track of. So when we talk about breaking up the database, breaking up the database over multiple nodes is called sharding. We'll use something called a sharding key to figure out how we would go about distributing the data. We do have to worry about data skew. So if you think about it like, um, okay, if you haven't seen the minions, sorry, but go watch them, it will make sense. So if you think about it like you're breaking up your database and you're giving a small piece of your database to each one of your little minions. But if you don't break it upright, you might end up with minions that are like, you know, running around and they don't have enough. And then you might end up with a minion that has way too much. Like, do you really want to weigh down minion Bob with too much database? No, you do not. So you want to make sure that everything is being spread out equally. So in your group project of minions, everybody has to pull their own weight. Otherwise, you might end up taxing some of the minions. When we talk about the sharding keys, we have to be really careful how we break up the database. We know from past weeks that SQL databases are relational. So they're made up of tables and the tables have relationships to each other. SQL relies really heavily on these relationships. And so we have to make sure that when we are breaking up the data using the sharding key, we are keeping these relationships together correctly and we don't lose any of the relationships. If we are making anything, if we are making changes, everything has to be changed, which is harder. Like, you know, if you go talk to the minions and you're like, actually, um, this email address needs to be this instead of that. You have to make sure that all of the minions have that message. And it can take a while to get through all of the little minions. If the tables weren't sharded in the same way, we can also have inconsistencies and problems where the relationship is no longer sort of specified correctly. And then we can end up with lost and orphaned data. So this is kind of the equivalent of you've get broken up the database, you've given it to all of your minions, but one of the minions decided to wander off in the wrong direction and nobody can go track them down. And you have to like either be okay losing that minion or hope that they get found again. When you are making changes, such as like adding or remo removing data from the database, you have to make sure that this is being done across each of the servers or shards as well. So if you are, for example, updating an email address, you have to make sure that that email address is being updated across each shard as it's going. So the sharding key is actually really important and how we can make sure that the database is getting broken up correctly. To pick a sharding key, you have to keep in mind um, quite a few things, but I'm going to say these are going to be the top things to keep in mind. So cardinality. This is how you pick the max number of pieces. You want larger number of pieces potentially, so you need high cardinality. So let's say, for example, I have a database of books. I could use book ID as the key to ensure that there are lots of pieces because um, I know that each book is going to have its own ID. So if I break it up, so, you know, each shard has a uh, the information about the book, maybe that would end up working. Frequency. This is how often the key value is in the data. If the value is used too often, the shards won't be evenly distributed. So one of the things that you can do is actually use multiple fields for your key. So instead of just using book ID for your key, you might end up wanting to use multiple. So let's say in our example, instead of a book ID, we had a library ID. So each library has a list of all of the books and we've decided to break it up by library. But the problem is some of the smaller libraries might be able to fit in one shard without too much of a problem, but some of the bigger libraries might not. So if we had, you know, like the Library of Congress, <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna be fitting in one shard. 
So you might end up wanting to use multiple fields as the key so that you don't have just library ID. Maybe you have library ID and book ID or library ID and author ID so that you don't have to worry about one shard being overloaded and no longer load balanced. Monotonicality. Um, keys that increase at predictable rates can affect node balancing. So if you check out books and you use the date as the key, if you do too many writes, um, that might end up changing. So if you're using date as the key, so like, you know, Monday um, is going to write to one chart, Tuesday is going to write to another, Thursday is going to write to another. Well, the problem can be that if you end up checking out a whole bunch of books on Monday, that's going to end up changing the database and writing to the database, which can be a little bit labor intensive. So if you are writing to the database that many times, that's going to be hitting that one shard every single time, which can create a bottleneck. So you end up wanting to think about that in terms of your data is how can you make sure that it's happening sort of predictably so that you don't have this uneven like, oh, no, well, it turns out, you know, Monday, a whole bunch of people actually checked out books. So bottleneck. OK, query patterns. A lot of queries are actually done routinely. So if you think about that, you want to think about how you can take advantage of that for the key. So if you know a query is done routinely, um, then your shard key probably wants to cover some of those patterns. So let's say for the library, if we needed to check on which books are currently checked out, that's really common. So maybe we would want to consider that as part of what we would want to use as our shard key so that we could access it quickly. Because if it's all together, let's say on one node or two nodes, that's going to be a lot easier to find than if it's spread out across all of our, you know, 100 nodes. One of the things that makes SQL databases really popular is that they use something called ACID transactions. ACID transactions are the way that we can guarantee the data has been changed properly. Now, I say properly, but that's just in this particular case. There's other ways to change data that is also technically proper. But um, when we talk about SQL, we end up having the guarantee of all of the data being changed. So an ACID transaction is it has to be all or nothing. The rules have to be respected. Everything has to be processed independently. And the transaction has to be permanent. So um, if we know that it's an atomic transaction, we know that it's all or nothing. Either everything happens or nothing happens. If it's consistent, we know that we've paid attention to the rules for the entire transaction. If we know that it's isolated, we know that this has been done independently, so we don't have to worry about this affecting other stuff. And if we know that it's durable, we know that this transaction has happened sort of everywhere in a permanent way. This is one of the strengths of SQL and relational databases is these ACID transactions. Maintaining ACID through horizontal scaling is actually really difficult because the more nodes that you have, the more that you have to worry about. SQL databases were traditionally only done on a single node or on a single server. So we didn't really have to worry about, you know, changing lots of servers. We only had to worry about this one server. The more nodes we have or the more servers we have, the more complicated it gets to ensure that we are keeping to ACID transactions. We can also start worrying about things like distributed queries. So if you have the data in multiple places, that means you have to have communication with multiple places, which can end up being an issue for networking because now you have multiple places that you are communicating with. And that's going to end up adding in some time. Trying to make sure that you keep the ACID transaction across the shards because we have to make sure that all the data is changed and we don't end up having like one random shard somewhere that has the old data with it. So one of the ways that you can think about it is like it's trying to coordinate a room of people. And are those people all in one spot or are they spread out across the world? It's going to be inherently harder if they're spread out across the world. Spread out across the world is the equivalent of horizontal scaling and this sharded database. <laughs>
So when we talk about SQL and SQL databases, we know that we're going to be relying really heavily on table joins. And this is sort of one of the fundamental things that SQL does. As soon as we start adding in nodes or shards, the joins become harder. More machines have to talk to each other. More machines are working on the query. Even if the original join was a simple thing, it may no longer be simple if there are a bunch of servers involved. Communication can be slow, and depending on where the shards are and sort of geographically where they're located, that can also slow it down. So like one of the things that can sometimes happen, um, so the example that I'll use is like if you're cooking a loaf of bread, well, baking a loaf of bread in the oven is going to take you 30, 45 minutes. Adding in more ovens does not make your bread cook faster. It means that you could potentially make more loaves in that 45 minutes, but it does not make your single loaf cook faster. And the same thing can end up happening if we're talking about queries. And so just like more machines working on the query does not necessarily mean it will be faster. It just might they might be sitting there staring, going like, well, I don't want to do that. That computer is doing all of it because that's where the shard is. Um, but all of the shards communicating with each other can also be part of our slowdown um, because that communication is going to end up adding these like fractions of a second and, or full seconds. And if you end up adding those together, that can actually turn into something that you went from, oh, I didn't really notice, maybe it's a little slow, to I've tried to search the product list and I've been waiting for 10 minutes and I still have nothing. Uh, node consistency. So each node or server or minion should have equal work to do. They need to have the same data state. They need to be, all the data must be synchronized. So that's a lot easier to do when we're talking about vertical scaling because that means, you know, Gru is doing everything by themselves. Um, whereas, you know, the minions can get a lot more done, but you have to coordinate them all because, you know, minions are destructive. So making sure that all of the nodes or minions have the correct data can be difficult. You can update the data with one minion, but it can be harder to make sure that it's spread out across all of them. You have to make sure that the updates are done quickly and reliably. It's not okay if some minions have wandered off with old data. An example, if you update your email, that email has to be updated across the entire database. So if you have a whole bunch of servers or shards, it has to be updated in each of those and you have to guarantee that it's been updated. Um, and this can get even more complicated if we start talking about real-time consistency. Okay, schemas. Sharding the database can change your schema. Um, that's harder on horizontally scaled databases. Coordinated changes get harder and harder the more nodes we have. So basically, if you're trying to get the minions to all sort of pull in the same direction, the more minions you add, the harder it is to keep them all organized and not have anybody running off yelling about bananas. We have to worry about synchronization and data consistency, but also the downtime. We need the database to be accessible. We do not want the database to go down. Um, people get really mad if their databases go down, even if it's only for 30 minutes. People get mad, no likey. So you wanna make sure that synchronizing the database does not mean that the database goes down. Successfully scaling your database should make sure that the table relationships stay correct and have been checked. One of the things that you do need to be careful with is try not to make assumptions. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure those relationships are fine. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure the table is, the data is all right in that table. Like, no, 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 we do not do that. We have to make sure that we actually check it. Yes, I'm sure because I've checked the table. Yes, I'm sure because I've checked the relationship. Yes, I'm sure because after this change, I've gone and checked the relationship between the tables. Like, that's what you need to do. So with query optimization, we talked a lot about indexes. That was sort of our original go-to. When we have multiple servers, each query might have to hit multiple tables and 
in multiple places. So that means we have to start worrying about communication time because each of these shards have to be able to communicate with each other. It's no longer considered local. So we have to end up adding that communication time in and taking it into account. Changing how you set up the query um, and changing how you do that, taking into account the sharding scheme that you've used can help. So if you, instead of just thinking about how the tables are related to each other, if you think about how they were broken up, how they were sharded, you can sometimes make your queries more efficient. Um, you can make sure that your data is being load balanced correctly because if you have, you know, like one shard or minion that's doing all of the work, then that's going to end up creating some bottlenecks that if you can get rid of that bottleneck will improve your query optimization. You can also do something called caches where you can basically save a copy of commonly used data somewhere a little bit more locally. You know, it's always easier to pull a book from the same room that you're in rather than going across town to the library to go find the book there. Um, another thing you can do is take your really complex queries and break it up into simpler ones. Um, and sometimes that can actually help reduce query time because it doesn't have to pull data from quite so many places in one go, as it were. So I hope that was helpful. That was SQL scalability. Um, and I hope you are all having a lovely day.